Chapter 6 It was very loud, even though it seemed to be coming from far away. The rhythm seemed almost like a baby's cry, the frantic, desperate howls of an abandoned infant, but the voice was much deeper. Kate dropped the clipboard, clipboard and vaulted out of the chair. She darted around the folding screen. Joyce was opening the door to the back lab. Everyone else was staring, apparently frozen. Kate dashed up behind Joyce, just as the screaming stopped. Calm down, just calm down, Marisol was saying. She was standing in front of the blue mohawk guy, who was cringing against the wall. His eyes were wild, his mouth loose and wet with saliva. He seemed to be crying now. How long? Joyce said to Marisol, approaching the mohawk guy with, his, with hands outstretched in a I mean no harm gesture. Marisol turned. About 45 seconds. Oh, my God, Joyce said. What happened? Caitlin burst out. She couldn't stand to watch this college-age guy cry anymore. What is going on here? What's wrong with him? Caitlin, please, Joyce said in a harassed voice. Caitlin looked around the room and saw that the door to the steel room was opening. Gabriel stepped out with a sneer on his arrogant, handsome face. I warned you, he said coldly to Joyce's back. This volunteer is a psychic, Joyce said in a thin voice. Not psychic enough, obviously, Gabriel said. You don't care at all, do you? A voice said from behind Caitlin. She felt herself start. She hadn't heard Rob walk up. Rob, Joyce said, but just then the mohawk guy made a movement as if to dash away, and she broke off, fully occupied to restrain in restraining him. I said, you really don't care, Rob was saying, stalking up to face Gabriel. To Kate, he looked like a golden, avenging angel, but she was worried about him. In contrast to Rob's light, Gabriel looked like dangerous darkness. For one thing, Gabriel had been in jail. If it came to a fight, Caitlin would bet he'd fight dirty. And for another, he'd obviously done something to that volunteer. He might do it to Rob. I didn't arrange this experiment, Gabriel was saying in a frightening voice. No, but you didn't stop it either, Rob snapped. I warned them. You could have just said no. Why should I? I told them what might happen. After that, it's their problem. Well, now it's my problem too. They were snarling right in one another's faces. The air was thick and electric, feeling with tension, and Caitlin couldn't stand it any longer. Both of you, just stop it, she exploded, reaching them with three long steps. Yelling at each other doesn't help anything. They went on glaring at each other. Rob, Caitlin said. Her heart was pounding. He looked so handsome, blazing with anger like this, and she could sense he was in danger. Strangely, it wasn't Rob who responded to her. Gabriel turned his dark, cold gaze away from Rob's face to look at Caitlin. He gave her one of his most disturbing smiles. Don't worry, he said. I'm not going to kill him, yet. It would violate my parole. Caitlin felt a chill as his grey eyes looked her up and down. She turned to Rob again. Please? Okay, Rob said slowly. He took a long breath and she could feel the tension go out of his body. He stepped back. Everyone seemed to feel the change in atmosphere and relax. Caitlin had almost forgotten about the volunteer in the last few minutes, but now she saw that Joyce and Marisol had coaxed him into a chair. He sat with his head bent nearly to his knees. Oh, ma'am, what did you do to me? He was muttering. What did you do to him? Rob said to Gabriel. Caitlin wanted to know, too. She was wild to know, but she was afraid of another flare-up. Instead, Gabriel just looked grim, almost bitter. Maybe you'll find out someday, he said significantly, making it a threat. It was then that Caitlin heard Lewis's hesitant voice calling from the front lab. Uh, Joyce, Mr. Zaitz is here. Oh, God, Joyce said, straightening up. Caitlin didn't blame her. All the experiments disrupted, everybody standing around, one volunteer practically writhing on the ground. It was a lot like getting a visit from the school principal when the class is in a total uproar. Mr. Zitz was wearing a black coat again and the two dogs were behind him. Problems, he said to Joyce who was quickly smoothing down her short blonde hair. 
Just a slight one. Gabriel had some difficulties. It looks as if that young man had some too, Mr. Zett said dryly. He walked over to the Mohawk guy, looked down at him, then up at Joyce. I was going to call an ambulance, she said. Marisol, would you... There's no need, Mr. Zetz interrupted. I'll take him in the car. He turned to look at Gabriel, Rob and Kate, who were all standing by the steel room. The rest of you young people can take a break, he said. Yes, go on. Testing is finished for today, Joyce said, still flustered. Marisol, why don't you escort Fawn back home? And... Make sure she's not upset about anything. Marisol headed for the front lab without changing her sullen expression. Gabriel went too, with the smooth, long steps of a wolf. Rob hesitated, looking at the Mohawk guy. Can I maybe help? No thank you, Rob. If you want some lunch, there are cold cuts in the fridge, Joe said in such a voice that Rob had to leave. Caitlin followed, but she paused in the doorway as if trying to shut the door very quietly. It was sheer curiosity. She wanted to know if Mr. Zaitz was going to yell at Joyce. Instead, he said, How long? About 45 seconds. <laughs> ah. It sounded almost appreciative. Caitlin took one glimpse of Mr. Zaitz tapping his cane thoughtfully on the ground, and then she had to shut the door. Gabriel was already gone. Marisol and Fawn were leaving. Marisol looking sullen, and Fawn looking back at Rob. Rob was chewing his lips, staring at the floor. Lewis was looking from one person to another. Anna was petting a white mouse she held in her hand. Where'd you get that? Caitlin asked. She felt someone ought to say something. He was in my experiment. See? This box has different numbered holes, and I'm supposed to make him go into one of them, whichever number the monitor shows. There must be a sensor inside the hole to register whether you get it right, Lewis said, coming over. Anna nodded, but she was looking past him. Don't worry, Rob, she said. Joyce and Mr. Zetz will take care of that guy. It'll be all right. Yeah, but can Mr. Z take care of Gabriel, Lewis said. That's the question. Caitlin smiled in spite of herself. Mr. Z? Sure, Mr. Zetz is too long. I just don't think he should be here, Rob said broodingly. Gabriel, I think he's trouble. And I think I'm going to go crazy wondering what it is he does, Caitlin said. But I don't think Joyce is going to tell us. Gabriel has a right to privacy if he wants it, Anna said gently, putting the mouse in a wire cage. I think we ought to do something to get our minds off it, since we have the afternoon off. We could go into town, or we could finish setting up the common room upstairs. As always, just being around Anna calmed Caitlin down. Serenity drifted from the Native American girl and filled the room. Let's do the room, Caitlin said. We can take lunch up there. I'll make sandwiches. I'll help, Rob said, and Caitlin's heart gave a startled leap. What do I say? What do I say? She thought in the kitchen. Lewis and Anna had gone upstairs. She and Rob were alone. At least her hands knew what to do. She was used to fixing meals for her dad, and now she spun the lids off mustard jars and stacked cold cuts efficiently. They were very Californian cold cuts. Turkey bologna and chicken slices, low-fat salami, alpine lace cheese. Rob worked just as efficiently, but he seemed abstracted, as if his mind were on other things. Caitlin couldn't stand the silence. Almost at random, she said, Sometimes I wonder if it's really a good idea to try and develop our powers. I mean, look at Gabriel. She said it because she had a vague notion Rob would agree. But he shook his head vigorously and came out of his brown study. No, it is good. It's important for the world. What Gabriel needs is to develop some control. He's bad, of, he's bad off for that. Or maybe he just doesn't want to control himself. Rob shook his head and slapped a piece of sprouted whole wheat bread on a, sh on a sandwich. But I think everyone ought to develop their talents. Do you realise most people have ESP? He looked at Kate earnestly. She shook her head. I thought we were special. We've got more of it, but just about everybody has some. If everybody could work on it, don't you see? Things might start getting better. And they look pretty bad right now. You mean, for the world? He nodded. People don't care much about each other. But you know, when I channel energy, I feel people's pain. 
If everybody could feel that, things would be different. There wouldn't be any murder or torture or stuff because nobody want, would want to cause pain to anybody else. Caitlin's heart had picked up. He'd channeled energy for her. Did that mean he felt close to her? But all she said, very gently, was, not everybody can be a healer.